Hello and welcome to BNN's House Money. I'm Greg Bennell. We have a great show ahead, so let's get right to it. Taxing empty homes in Vancouver. Of course, the hope there of getting more supply on the market. It's going to put $30 million in the city coffers this year. And that does sound like a big number. That revenue is being generated on a surprisingly small number of the 8,500 homes that are thought to be sitting empty in the city. Earlier, I spoke with Steve Soretsky, founder of the Van City Condo Guide, for his take on the vacant home tax. I think the numbers are probably on like the lower side of what people expected. I mean, obviously, I think there's going to be people that don't truthfully declare that, and I think it's going to be a really tough policy to police. Um, but obviously, $30 million, I think they've budgeted roughly $7 million to, to police it and enforce it. So pretty nice revenue generator for the city. All right, so they will get that revenue, and they do say it'll go into affordable housing initiatives. But at the same time, uh, the overarching uh, goal of all this is to try to get more supply into the market. And as you said, there's the number of homes that are actually getting captured by this tax sounds small by some of the estimates we had. Are they going to actually achieve that part of the mandate, get more rental stock into the market? Yeah, I think everything helps. I mean, obviously, this is a smaller number, but they've also cracked down on Airbnb units. Uh, we have a, currently a record number of new housing units under construction. So I think all of this is, is certainly going to help. Uh, I mean, if you just look at it some, from a more micro level, uh, Vancouver rents actually peaked out it, really in the summer of last year. Since then, I would say the, the rent growth has, has pretty much stopped or slowed down. So uh, I think you can start to see some, some easing off there. Another thing that caught my eye in some of the numbers that the mayor tweeted out in terms of the revenue they'll get, but the amount of homes that are being captured by this, uh, what was it, about a thousand are going to dispute that classification? This, uh, to me, raises the specter of perhaps uh, some legal wrangling over the fact that you've been told you need to pay this tax, and you say, no, I'm not going to pay this tax. Yeah, it'll be uh, interesting to see how much uh, of a legal bill they end up uh, footing on this one, but... Uh, I think it does it does bring forth some some positives as well. I mean, I personally know of some uh, you know offshore investors that you know maybe own a couple units here in Vancouver that uh, aren't declaring rental income. Um, but you know, so you know if you're not declaring the rental income, then you're gonna have to basically declare that you're not uh, living in it and it's gonna be a vacant unit. So I think it sort of forces the hand that you're gonna have to basically declare one or the other. So I think that's probably something that doesn't get talked about. Oh, so maybe we make some progress on that front. Obviously, you know the city very well. Were you surprised when you looked at any of the numbers? I saw a little uh, map of the breakdown of how many homes in different areas of the city are going to get hit by this vacant home tax. Does some of them just seem uh, artificially low to you? Yeah, definitely some, uh, some ones that stick out, particularly the Shaughnessy and Carisdale areas, uh, obviously wealthier neighborhoods. I think if you go around and ask anyone that's actually living in those neighborhoods, uh, they'll tell you that there are a lot of empty houses and people that don't actually live there. Uh, so the number came in very, very low. I mean, obviously, like I said, that just could be people maybe not truthfully declaring. And there's obviously a long list of exemptions. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they sort of police that. Yeah, the exemptions, it turns out, when we take a look, over 5,000 of these properties that people thought perhaps would end up uh, back in the market somehow that were vacant were given those exem exemptions. Uh, that's a pretty large number. Yeah, I think the big one is the the strata buildings, right? I mean, obviously not all strata buildings are going to allow, they're going to have some sort of rental restrictions. So I think um, people can obviously play that up as well. So I think that that's probably a huge one. Now, as the government keeps trying to make moves, both at the city level, but also at the provincial level, looking at uh, some stuff out of the B.C. government today, they want to crack down on what they call tax evasion on people who keep flipping condos, the, the pre-sale condo market. Obviously, this is your bread and butter, the condo market. Uh, how much is that activity uh, getting uh, sort of ahead of itself in Vancouver, and, and is this a good place for the government to crack down? I mean, I think the, the pre-sale market is a highly speculative market. I mean, you know, you're essentially buying a, a pre-sale futures contract and we're seeing a ton of the that paper being flipped prior to completion. I mean, I think assignments have really taken off over the last year and a half to two years um, because there's really no inventory to pick from. So people are getting, are willing to be, you know, are willing to look at those pre-sale contracts. And so I think that that's a huge segment of the market that we've seen uh, growing exponentially.
Now, if you and I had been having this conversation a year and a half ago, if we were talking about a uh, paper flipping, this assignment contracts, we were talking about single family homes. Clearly, the composition of real estate and the heat has changed in the city. Is it fair to say now it's pretty much all in the condo space? Yeah, it's a really interesting dynamic. I think one of the things that got this whole housing boom kicked off was that uh, there was a shortage of land at Vancouver, was simply running out of land. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden over the last year, year and a half, n- apparently nobody wants to own any of that land anymore. And all the speculative activities moved into the condo market. Uh, I believe condo marking, condo flipping activity is actually at a decade high. Uh, and then if you look at the detached segment, uh, I believe it's at a nine year low. So all the, all the speculative money has sort of moved into the condo market. That's still where we're seeing price growth. I think some of it has to do with uh, a drop off of offshore investment, uh, as well as uh, I think the mortgage stress test has sort of pushed people down uh, a rung on the housing ladder, so to speak. When we look at a weakening Canadian dollar, it's been argued to me before that when the Canadian dollar was weak, that was some of the pockets where the Vancouver market was at its strongest. Because, of course, locally, we think in terms of our own currency. What can we afford? What can we not afford? Internationally, it makes real estate look pretty cheap. With a low Canadian dollar heading into the spring and the summer selling season, do you think we're going to start seeing more of that international interest or have they moved on? I mean, personally, I I think they've moved on. I think the numbers certainly reflect that in those markets that are heavily predicated on that. I mean, you look at luxury homes on the west side of Vancouver, I think they're coming in at 27-year low for sales uh, for the first quarter of 2018. Uh, Looking at a lot of property markets globally, because I do think they have some sort of correlation. Uh, And obviously, Australia has gone through a nice slowdown there, Uh, Manhattan. So I, I think it's a little bit more widespread. And I think obviously the taxation uh, in BC, you have the foreign buyers tax being up from 15% to 20%. You have a speculation tax coming in, uh, increased property transfer taxes, a school tax. So I think a lot of that has sort of discouraged uh, some of that offshore investment despite a, a, a weaker loony. All right, interesting stuff. Always good to catch up with you, Steve. No worries, my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. That was Steve Sareski, founder of the Van City Condo Guide.